Well, boys and girls, winter happened, snowmobile season's here, and the shop's full of broken ones already. So Steve last night gave this thing an awful, awful crudelization after it wouldn't start, and we yanked and yanked and yanked and yanked. He finally got it going, and we took it out for a, probably a good 35-minute run that it didn't see much under 7,000 RPM for the whole drive. So as you can see, the old... Rest stone's pissing out of her as we speak. We got all the head bolts backed off. And we had the old compression tester hooked to her. We had a mere, not quite 25 PSI in one cylinder. And she was thumping all the way up to 50 on the other. So we're going to pull this head off this old 583 Rotax. And we're going to see what kind of damage is inside. Didn't look horrible. Oh, look at the filing. Yeah, it looks like there's some chippies there on the top of that piston. I'll get the next round of bolts out and get this yanked off and see what the pistons look like. She, she's not sure what come out. Oh, no. Where's Something the... else hooked in the head. I think they're still threaded in the head. In the block. Yeah, there you go. This one here, too. Bust up my gasket. Boy, that's got some gap in the ring, don't it? Oh, she's missing. A, she's missing a piece. Look at that gear. She's missing a piece, Shanesy. Yeah, this one here is. Oh, that's got a. Oh, it's got a broken piece right there. Look, look. at that. Oh, See, oh, oh, I just dropped that oh inside. Oh boy. That's all right. Oh boy. She cracked the rings all to bejesus. Look at that. <clears throat> Nothing that a magnet. And these got a weird ring. Yeah. What'd you say they're called, Steve? A compression oh, lipped ring? Yeah, they're compression lipped. That's why they work. So there. That's a snowmobile life when you're running old stuff. All right, so we got the jug out. And as you can see, it is pulverized. And surprisingly, for as dirty of a scuff that's into it there, the ring stop is still in place. But it never hurt the cylinders a bit. The cylinder... It may look discolored because the lighting's not perfect, but there is not a score in this cylinder anywhere, so it must have went right out one of the exhaust ports and just said, see you later. I'm gonna have so the other piston, that's the bad one. This is the good one here. This is what they should look like, other than a little bit of imperfection there, but no big deal top of it isn't pulverized quite as bad as the other one it's obviously got a score here on the pin side but anyway we'll get a new set of jugs for and some gaskets and this thing will be back up and blapping steve has got about 16 of these old things laying around everywhere We're going to see if we can rob Peter to pay Paul. You guys know that story, right? Oh, them pistons look fucking mint. That was way better heads. Look at that. That is fucking cherry. 
That's how pistons are supposed to look. See that gear? This is just oil. Perfect, they're going in. Well, fellas, the square body's been sitting here for quite a while. As you see, I got an awful mound of snow piled up in front of her. And I had to take the gas tank off and do some repair work. It was leaking. And I figured, well, it's a nice, beautiful day. I might as well crawl underneath this thing, put the tank on it, put some fuel in it, and see if she'll fire up. It's a six liter LS, but I got my first bet is the battery's probably stone dead, so she's been sitting like two months or better. Oh, I hear the fuel pump. Let's see what happens. Oh, baby. That was effortless. What a good old truck. Well, boys, just getting some firewood in here with my little trailer set up. Just make sure when you're hauling, don't matter what you're hauling with, make sure you load her up and give it the geese. donkey out of the way oh it's just such a charade when it snows so what are the chances we found a set of wiseco piston and ring assembly top end kit for this old snowmobile local and the company was tired of sitting on to it so we got it for a hundred bucks so arrow on the wiseco always points out the exhaust and on these bombardiers, you'll notice that the compression ring is very strange. It has a ridge to it. So when you install this, you want the ridge on the top side, flat side on the bottom. I'm going to split this up the center. Oh, look at that. So we got the new Wise goes in her. Like I said, the arrows face forward. Steve's putting the hard clips in now. We put one clip in before we assembled it, obviously. To make life a little easier. But this thing will be blapping here in a very short period of time at this rate. So this was nice. Our uh, pistons that we got are oversized and they will not fit. So we end up robbing the head and the pistons of this motor. And we just to get that back together. Steve's just doing some final touches here. And uh, we're going to do a compression tech check here shortly. <coughs> We got 50 pounds of compression each side. That's it. But maybe our gauge is no effing good. Yeah. But we got the same number both sides. So now we just got to put fluid, hoses, exhaust. And look, it starts when you shut it off. Isn't that neat?